that's that's wrong. All right, come here and look at this. Look at this. That's that's wrong. That's that should be that should be F two. That's who did the who does this? Okay, you just got finished watching The Day the Earth Stood Still, and I hope you enjoyed it. It is one of my all-time favorite sci-fi films. I think that you and I will agree that uh, Professor Barnhart's math is a little bit wrong. Clatu's math is wrong on a couple of levels, and you and I, we, you and I, are going to get a chance to correct it in just a little bit. So get out your red pens, because it's your turn to be the math teacher. We're going to correct some math! All right, everybody. Let's see a show of hands of those who feel like the movie just preached to you. Well, that's pretty much everybody. Look, the movie has a message. And what is that message? 20th Century Fox was just simply answering the call made by a bunch of nervous audience members concerning the possibility of nuclear threat. Even today, some people might consider that an extremely valid concern. But because of the compromising nature of the message that perhaps we Americans are doing something bad by building up all these nuclear weapons and so forth, I mean, we are contributing to the problem, at least according to this movie, which might be viewed as being rather un-American. And yet, it was enjoyed by both patriotic and less than patriotic audiences. So what is this uh, message that the movie puts out? Essentially, we in the international community need to be getting together to figure out a solution, a positive, constructive solution to these problems. Of course, the, the movie is saying that we all should do our part. I'm doing my part. Mexican food. Mmm, ay, ay, ay. Me gusta la comida de mexicana. Es muy rica y deliciosa. Mmm. I think you'll find that's exactly what the Apostle Paul was trying to tell the Romans. Look at Romans 12, 18, and 19, it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It says right there in Scripture that that is what we are supposed to do. Even I have to admit that all of this looks really good on paper. To lay down our arms and call for peace. Now, that really sounds good, but who is not invited to these peace talks? Usually God is not invited. I'm sorry, but any kind of peace that is established by man it's going to be unstable and will ultimately fail. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 refers to Jesus as the Prince of Peace. Peace is not ours to give. It is God's to give. And we should really seriously remember that. that peace definitely is a part of God's plan. And ultimately he will bring peace, that's for sure. But, but let's look at what Jesus was telling his disciples whenever he was on his way to the garden to be arrested. It says... In uh, John chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we're talking about peace in the place of fear. But what is this math that we speak of? Come on, closer, closer, closer. I will show you. Ah! All right, everyone, here's where we're going to correct Klaatu's math. It says in 2 Timothy 1 7, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. So, from this, we can determine that fear does not equal power, love, and a sound mind. These are the things that God promises. This is from the Spirit of God. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Now, if we're talking about nuclear threat, if we're talking about the ecology, if we're talking about the economy, if we're talking about anything, whatever the news is that you are receiving, if the cornerstone of it is based on fear, 
then you know that it is not of God because God did not give us the spirit of fear. These are the things that he promises. So when they say we need to take care of the earth or you know things like that, that's fine. In fact, that's very, very good. God put us in charge of things like the earth. But if this is a voice of fear that is talking, we need to do this or else, then we might want to do our homework. We'll discover that that is not really of God. Okay, let's digress from that a little bit and talk more about the movie itself. Clatu was originally uh, supposed to be played by an actor named Spencer Tracy. Now, for those of you that don't know, Spencer Tracy is an amazing actor who's been in many, many movies. In fact, he's won multiple Academy Awards. But they felt that Clatu should be played, perhaps, by somebody who they don't know. It would add to his other world quality if they got a relatively unknown actor to play him. And so they looked across the Atlantic Ocean to England and found an actor by the name of Michael Rennie to come in and play him. And he did a superb job playing an even-tempered alien who has a very, very difficult job to do, convince everyone on the earth that they need to call for peace. Now, Mrs. Benson, who is the widowed mother of the little boy, she was played by Kentucky native Patricia Neal. Now, Patricia Neal, she enjoyed being in great movies, she did not consider this one to be a very good movie. It wasn't until years later that she found out just how seriously people took this movie. She herself had a very difficult time filming it because she was laughing so hard. She felt that the lines were ridiculous. Something about sci-fi just, just made it seem less serious to her. And having to say Klaatu Barada Nikto with a straight face was almost more than what she could bear. Also, Mrs. Benson's boyfriend was played by Hugh Marlowe. Hugh Marlowe is a, is a very cool actor. You'll find him a lot of times in sci-fi movies of the 1950s, even though he was not confined to that. Also, one of the great supporting roles of this is Sam Jaffe, who played Professor Barnhart. He has been amazing in everything he does. Uh, you'll find him in Ben-Hur. You'll find him in The Asphalt Jungle. Many, many movies where he uh, lends his talents. So those of you with a quick eye would probably recognize that the film in and of itself is not filmed in Washington, D.C., but rather in Hollywood. And the actors merely stood in front of back screens to do their dialogue when they were in a famous location spot. But the cameras did go to Washington, D.C. to get some footage for the film, as well as having um, stand-in actors for Michael Rennie and Billy Gray, who played the little boy. In the film, Professor Barnhart actually tells Klaatu that he has several thousand questions that he'd like to ask. Well, you probably have one question on your mind right now after having watched the movie. The question is this. Is the day that Earth stood still simply a science fiction version of the life of Christ? Well, let's examine what happens in the story. Klaatu descends from the heavens. He lives among the people. He even takes on the name Carpenter. Then he ends up having this message of peace that he wants to give to everyone. He is killed in the process. He is brought back from the dead and then ascends back into the heavens. That sounds like the life of Christ to me. But director Robert Wise did not see it that way. In fact, it wasn't even brought to his attention until years after the movie came out that it was essentially a sci-fi Jesus. The next question that you might have is, if this movie is indeed a life story of Jesus, how do we in the Christian community approach this film? Well, I can think of two ways. The first way is to be insulted by it. I mean, after all, this is the life of our Savior that they're tampering with. We should not take that lightly. Why? Because his life is sacred. Because this is a holy theme that we are talking about. And it is from Jesus that everything hinges off of in history. The second way that we can approach this is just as relevant as the first. And that is this. We have seen his story come up from time to time, before and after this movie. It's in The Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe. It's in E.T. It's in High Noon. It's, in, it's even in Walt Disney's Hercules, the cartoon. So what can be done about this? Nothing. 
the story of Jesus is going to be told. It is such an important story that it is interwoven into our consciousness as a people. And that because of that, it will consciously or unconsciously reemerge all the time. It cannot be contained. The story of Jesus will be told. In the final analysis, there's only one formula that really matters. And let's take a look at it. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Through that, there is victory. Victory over death, victory over sin. And as a result of that, we now have the ability to be saved. Thank you very much for joining us. This concludes our study of The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951. Before you go, we want to remind you that if you're doing this in a small group or just an individual study, there are some discussion questions that you might profit from after having seen this film. But before you go, there's one last thing we'd like to say. There's a popular catchphrase among the science fiction enthusiasts of the 1950s, and it went along the lines of, Always watch the skies. I think you'll find that the Christian community has been saying that for years.